Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back, and we're back. Yes, yes. Unusual day where we didn't get a video up. That hardly ever happens, but we're okay. We just had so many other things going on. Um, a lot of people, as far as uh, sessions, which, you know, again, uh, energy work, spiritual counseling, coaching. Uh, we we do all that Vedic astrology, and there's a lot of people in need, you know, on a one-on-one -on -one basis right now. As you could tell, there's a lot of people stressed out in this world. It's not easy. It's not easy right now at all. No, it's not. It's not. So, you know, yesterday was just crazy. And then also, you know, you, you, I really do think everybody needs to be... Um, prepared as possible for whatever they're going to throw at us and we're going to be getting a patreon exclusive up today it's going to be kind of a hard one uh to talk about but needs to be talked about again we, we don't ever solve anything by ignoring it you have to really uh, tear out the root of the causes of whatever it is that's plaguing you or society in general and you know there is a saying that emotions are the root cause of most disease i would say so when you know the cause is not intentional poisoning uh that we see going on in so many places yes and in, in other times perhaps uh emotions really are uh the root cause of so much dis, dis ease which becomes disease and there's a lot of emotions uh, that people are going through at this point in time. And if you went and checked your bank account and you're expecting to see digits and all you saw was zeros, oh, 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 that could certainly give you some quick emotions of a negative kind. Oh, yes, that would be like a huge jolt to many people. I did hear from a lot of people that that happened to. And they were quickly informed that uh, B of A had an outage, but... Uh, many people assured other people, they said, if you just click on your balance, it, it comes right back. But, you know, to me, that's really scary. We just had that big thing from Verizon and I had several family members, their phones were just blinking SOS. They could not make any calls and they could text, thank goodness. And then we found out later, oh, oh, that was an internal thing. <clears throat> they don't know who did it or why it happened, but it was internal and we're sorry. So these huge companies, it, it, it doesn't feel, <laughs> it doesn't feel like they're up to any good. Oh no. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. She's, she's just, cute. she's just putting it a little bit politically correct there. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of adjectives we could use in describing the major corporations on the planet. Israel has struck a Russian airbase in Syria directly for the first time. Israel attacked a warehouse of the Russian Kamimim airbase shortly after an Iranian plane unloaded its weapons for Hezbollah. Yeah, striking the bear directly. They've poked, they've prodded, they've done everything they could to um, bring about the timing of, of WW3, as we know, it, it feels like these things are imminent. And uh, th these are challenging times to be going through. Israel also released this video. And what is it of? It's of Iran's nuclear facilities. So they have not responded. Now, there was reports that said they were going to respond uh, the night that they were struck by uh, Iran with that 200 or so missile salvo and they haven't now you know unless you want to call the attack on the you know russian base response they've also been hitting uh other areas in syria and lebanon just you know as a regular uh thing but you know those those are probably not what what we're expecting to see as you know some sort of response it very well could be something like this you know the it seems like the dark ones really, really want always to create these radiological messes. Mm. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, uh, you know, if there is a, a silence um, where we someone was expecting a response and it's silence, it just remembers, uh, it reminds me of the times when, you know, mom would say, go to your room, wait for your father. 
and you know the anxiety starts to build and and the anticipation of everything and say that time comes and goes and it's still silent well you just kind of keep getting more and more afraid because it's like oh my gosh what are they planning for me yes absolutely you know and just want to again uh do a little shout out for everybody uh whether a patreon or just a member of this family um we're so grateful i feel like carol burnett i want to sing i'm so glad we had these times together you remember that i th she reminded me of my mother she really did my mom reminded me of carol burnett a little bit you know in an affectionate way um could be a little bit comedic at times a lot of people noticed that netanyahu's hands were shaking like a leaf here as he was uh, reading off Israel's response to Iran. So why? I mean, he's got three Draco draped all over him. And, you know, he's as dark as uh, any soul gets on this planet. Why would he be nervous? It, he, honestly, if <laughs> you want to know what came to me, is he's afraid of uh, other extraterrestrials saying enough of this crap. I, I don't know, you know, I, I feel into his energy and it feels a little bit um, cloaked or it feels a little bit hidden. I do feel just the nervousness, but you can see that right there with his hands. So I I don't know. We'll have to kind of wait and see what's going on because, yeah, he I mean, he should feel somewhat protected because he does have those dark ones draped all over him. But uh, maybe there's some things he knows now that we do not, and he has reason to be concerned. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is this, this is the script that they are playing out. They are playing out the script. It, it's the same thing. Many people are, are really realizing this for the first time. You know, this is <laughs> Wednesday, October 2nd, Walmart, Airport Road, Asheville. <laughs> Asheville, you know, is, is again a place I know really well. Lived that area for a year. And for me, that's a long time. Because <laughs> I have moved 41 times uh, in my life. Yes, I've, I'm definitely a gypsy at heart. It's hard for me to sit still. Uh, it really, really is. Um, and hence, we, we do have a tra travel trailer. Somebody else said, so where are you? Exactly. It's it's more like, well, where are we for now? Because as much as we want to perhaps root and settle, you got to realize the times that we are in may make it so, you know, you could have the best homestead laid out there, as so many people did in this area. I mean, when I think about the major homesteading channels, this is kind of almost like ground zero. North Carolina is so loaded with great homesteading channels. When I think of homesteading, I almost synonymously think of North Carolina. Uh, I mean, there's other places, too, that are, are wonderful for homesteading, but I'm just saying this is an epicenter that feels like it was intentionally targeted. Oh, and so, you know, thankfully, all the big ones uh, that we covered, and there uh, there was also um, what's just uh, Roots and Refuge. I forgot to put Roots and Refuge in there. Yeah, they were all impacted, but they're all going to bounce back and they're all going to keep plugging forward. They're not going to stop doing what they want to do. These these people out here are, for the most part, very wonderful. And you can see this huge line. What were the people able to get when they could finally go into their Walmart? Uh, just pharmaceuticals. Everything else is pretty much wiped out. As you can see, this is what we've been talking about, about having preparations and yeah, you know, if if we couldn't get any more food at this moment and we had to live two years, we probably could. Of course, we would be eating a little portion of rice, a little portion of lentils, a little portion of beans, a little portion of quinoa and amaranth. We have those type of things in bulk and in, you know, vacuum seal buckets that can last a long period of time. We don't do um, uh, the pre-packaged stuff that so many people push um, that's loaded with preservatives and things you know like um, Patriot Pantry or, or Pantry yeah. you know though the, those type of places because look closely at, at what's in there if it's all the GMO sugar laden crap that's not going to really help you you got to be strong in these times you have to really 
um, work on boosting the immune system because everybody is being exposed to so many toxins. Man, you know, it's it's really horrible and it's hard uh, for Cindy to um, go through some of this because, you know, we, we're convinced that this is part of what she was seeing many, many years ago uh, when she was having visions of kids being separated uh, from their family and being on their own in the woods. This is a map of the different uh, counties, and these are the ones that are disaster areas. Uh, yeah, you probably have a, a, a solid quarter of North Carolina to a third that is a disaster area right now. Seriously, this is so impactful, and you know it goes over into Tennessee, of course. And then what about Florida? You know, that's where it impacted it for in the first place. Um, Transylvania County, um, it sticks out to me. I've been through all these mountains. It's so beautiful and breathtaking, and the amount of uh, waterfalls and just scenic overlooks mother nature is going to bounce back it's going to take us a little bit more time and a lot more work uh, to bounce back after this one this is uh, another well after the fact after this is run through as you can see roads are completely impassable completely impassable this devastation is i think beyond pretty much anybody's belief or expectation this is not, you know, the coast of Florida. We are talking, I don't know how many miles inland, maybe 700. I, I, I don't have a off the top of my head. It's so well inland. Most of this area is, is around, I would say, 2,500 feet, you know, up to uh, 4,000, 4,500 feet. I was living at 3,300 feet. Um you know, this this is not low-lying lands. Yeah, there there was a lot of rivers uh, all throughout the area, and yeah, when when we did get good rains, it it could flood. So you could see the potential was was there. But again, this is not normal. There is no way. This is Chimney Rock, by the way. This is almost like a ground zero area. Adorable little country southern towns just places that are so they're just full of great people i mean honestly you know some of the nicest kindest people i've ever met are in what we would call the south it's it's just it's just awful it's just horrible what people are going through so i mean we're gonna keep keep the attention on this because energy goes where we point our attention and I want these people to have some some kind of help some way shape or form and if we keep on it then there's going to be other things that can happen for them in a, in a positive way so we just we really have to keep that attention there um you know it, it's just something that's so awful and and we are listening to the other things where there was the the lithium underneath and then the quartz crystal and then the people who did not have the flood insurance and they cannot bounce back from this i mean there's just so many things that line up one after the next that makes this no longer scientifically eligible in any way shape or form to be an accident I mean, there's just no way. So who and how do we hold anyone or anything accountable? A nameless, faceless entity did this. And, and none of us can put our finger on it. We have puppets that we can point to. But those puppets are just going to say, I'm in no, I didn't do it. You know, it's so easy for them to step back and say, I didn't do it. You know, but if everyone understands that this is a technology, we can get closer to the truth and we can get closer to to somehow some way holding those accountable who are even holding back the ability for people to get help to me when I see when I see the ability for people to be helped when I see that being held back I mean I hold those in charge accountable but how do we do that how do we do that when they've placed them placed themselves to be in almost like an untouchable situation so just like what we saw with Maui and Hawaii, 
Um, they're going to give 750 bucks to the families affected by the hurricane, 750. So we've seen all sorts of numbers. Ukraine gets over 200 billion. American citizens get 750. I was looking at just what we've given Israel and Ukraine this year. Um, and when you look at it, it, if you do it per populace, the, the amount of money just this year we've given Israel would break down to about um, 2400 per person in Israel. You know, we, we understand that they're not giving 2400 per person in Israel. They're just, you know, sending over weapons and aid to make more death and destruction. Uh, yet that's still, you know, three and a half. It's over three times what, what um, they're giving the average person here. Uh, that that has lost everything, everything. And again, insurance insurance companies have been pushed to the brink. And of course, you know they're not in it to lose money. They want to make money, so you know they have all their loopholes and uh, everything as well. And a lot of people didn't have flood insurance, you know, because they're not on the coast and they just you know, or they're not right next to a big body of water. So when you look to Ukraine, it, it's it's double the amount um, that's been given to Israel. So when you look at it, so much more money is going to. And then we could talk about the migrant situa situation because they're getting way more than American citizens. And we're the ones that they're using our money. This is this is untenable this is you know it, it's it's more than double middle fingers it's literally instead of putting out the hand to help you up they're just shoving you off the cliff uh, you know it's you have to realize this is what's happening they're just throwing you straight off the cliff oh you want a hand up and it's like smiling putting your hand down and then stomping the boot in the face so FEMA announced a nine billion dollar shortfall for Hurricane Helen Helene recovery. Same day, the U.S. gave 8.7 billion in weapons to Israel. These, quite simply, are demons. I mean, the, these entities that run the show here are so much um, soulless. It, it's. It, I think it boggles the average person's mind because the average person can't think that evilly. Uh, it, we have to be worked up into a frenzy to get us to even begin to, uh, you know, comprehend what is going on here. Here you have a notice to vacate. We saw the same things going up in Maui. You know, sim the similarities between the responses very, very obvious. And, you know, here they'll smile and just say everything is a CONS piracy theory. Um, but the reality is, no, it's not. You know, w there's not enough fluoride, again, to get us all to be mindless zombies in the water. And uh, many more people are going to be filtering their water now and recognizing what's going on. There's legislation going into effect, eliminating their ability to do that. So, you know, this is talking about one particular... Um, uh, property in Bryson City. You know, honestly, I looked at Bryson City as a place to uh, settle, very peaceful. It had lunches out there. It, it was just, you know, nice, quiet, very, very isolated. And this is a campground, RV park uh, and country store, actually. Yeah, have been through this area. So, you know, they, they have to cease and desist. And anything that's left there will be, you know, confiscated really it'll just probably be bulldozed and wiped out this is, this is maui all over again it, it really really is on a much larger scale none of these entities do anything truly for us why are we funding them because we have no choice because they'll put people in jail uh, here you have a pilot using his own chopper and money and money to rescue people that were stranded, he's threatened to be placed in jail. Something seriously not right with this. A lady posted that she, her kids, her animals were trapped. So the pilot piled food and water into his helicopter, went to rescue him. No restrictions to fly over the area, but a Lake Lure fire official caught wind of it and shut him down, threatened to throw him in prison if he continued rescuing people. Now, you know, the National Guard, there's just a token force 
most of them are are preparing for WW3 or they're already out of our country. This system is demonic. It is so demonic. It's just, you know, again, they're they're not thinking like we do because they're not uh, they're not really human. They're, they 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 don't have compassion. People like this, he, he has compassion. He's willing to use his own uh, money, time, and and put his own life in risk to help others. There's so many people out there like that, but not the people that run the show or apparently run the show. They're they're really again lower lower management or even less when you get down to it. Everything has to be done through NCEM, you know, which is like emergency man- management. Um, so any type of thing has to be coordinated with them. Now, if they're moving slow as molasses, then what are you going to do? Or if they're if they're not willing to to do things, what are you going to do? You you have to, if you plan to move people, resources, or equipment through Western North Carolina, because technically all the roads are shut down. It's a disaster area. So you you got to basically uh, check with them, put put a title in the subject line, logistics support, and you could email you know your requests. So many people are going to say, screw that. You know, there's people that are still you know literally their lives are in danger. You got little kids wandering about. You have a very hazardous situation and. Some people actually care, certainly not government officials. And, and no, uh, the Russian government, the Chinese government wouldn't care anymore. You know, this is the, the big reveal. It's, it's none of the governments that are here on the planet for humans. They're here to keep humans under control. And, and it's a mess. And I, I do believe that this is the part where people are coming together. You know, I, I would like to know, you know, who is that Lake Lure official who's, you know, officially helping out? And what did he do to help rescue that person? You know, people. Are, is his job just to look around and report people who are doing rescues? I, who is, who are these people? That's my question. Who are these people who are thwarting efforts to other people to save lives that that's the question to me there's like this chain of 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 events going on up the ladder and where is it broken where are people getting thrown into the river it's like we can look at each individual problem that's thwarted but i think the effort more effort should go to figuring out who are these people and why and how do they do this and then go look at themselves in the mirror they have got to be taken over by some jinn they've got to be being taken over by some entity because how do you do that and and not allow someone to get help and then go home to your warm cozy home your family your pets knowing that you just prevented someone you could have you that could have saved lives how and this is the part where it does get very difficult. And it is very difficult for me to sit here and listen to all of these stories where children are wandering alone, bodies are in trees, and on and on and on. And thinking, well, you know, these visions that I did have so many years ago. That, How many years was oh, that? it? Oh, it was, it was quite a few. Yeah, it was probably uh, 14, 15 years ago not understanding what they were seeing children separated from their family crying walking completely alone hungry and it it wouldn't stop it just would not stop so what do you do in that situation you you can tell and scare people and some people think oh if if i were to say something and give it attention i'm making it happen but i tell you what it was so horrific i had to shut it down i had to do a hard shutdown however i could do that but it still happened so all the people that are saying oh fear porn all the people that are saying oh you're creating this problem no if somebody gets a vision it's probably slated to happen and it's not your fault and i think people should speak up a little more instead of being afraid of the trolls that that put their put their little notes in there oh fear porn no i mean if we know what's coming then maybe we can at least we can't stop it obviously but maybe we can buffer it some 
Yeah, the trolls, you know, generally they're they're in different categories. You know, one category is, is so medicated, sedated that, that they're easily controlled by demonic forces. Another one is is people that are just simply too too afraid to face things, you know. So they want to just kind of hit, do the ostrich thing and s stick their head in the sand. And you know, if something hits them in the ass, at least they didn't see it coming, you know. And then you have those that literally do work for the system. Um, it is their job to uh, cause uh, disinformation, you know, by by saying that you know you're giving disinformation. So, you know, you do have all of the above, and it's not easy for, for the people in that category where they just can't face things. You know, we've, we've always known these times are coming, and this is why, you know, we've had those of the, you know, more fluffy nature, let's say. Um, you know, say you guys, you know, you're, you're going to help to make it happen because you're focusing on the negative. Our hope is, and I know it has helped, that we could actually save lives because of, of drawing attention to it. And, you know, we, I've seen comments where and people have reached out and said, you know, you guys literally did save my life because I would have done these other things. And, you know, I woke up and I changed, you know, the path I was on or, you know, made preparations for things that have turned out to, to work out really well. So, yeah, we're not going to stop doing what, what we've always done because this is why we're here at this point in time. This is also why, you know, when you look at numbers um, and we see they do not allow anybody that's not a subscriber pretty much to see our videos because they don't want people waking up. They, they obviously control the media. Um, everybody realizes that. But people are breaking through more and more. Uh, this gentleman is talking about how FEMA has ceased, you know, some of the relief operations, etc., and are, are hesitating. But he says he has never seen people come together like he's seeing right now. So this is what the um, system is, is, is really unintentionally creating is a sense of community. Um, stronger, uh, stronger community where people realize we can't wait for government. We can't count on government. And there's no government really, again, that, that is f truly for the people. And it's not even really for the elites that you see out there and the politicians. No, it, it's for the real controllers that you never see, but you will get recognition of and, and maybe even sooner then later, as you know, disclosure is something that is is just not going to uh, go away. And, and still, you have every now and then people that make statements like, "Oh, I can't take you seriously. You're talking about things like planets. Planets aren't real." It's like, "Oh my God! You know what? Is your, is your diet just Cheetos all day?" I mean, what are you doing that your mind can be so cloudy as to not understand the bigger picture here? Well, it, it's exactly what the system is doing. It, it's, it's all the frequencies, it's the food, it's everything. But those people that understand this, um, they are getting more clear-minded than ever. And like yesterday with um, some of the most um, beautiful and gifted people uh, that we talk to on a regular basis, that have amazing uh, abilities and can see so clearly, uh, just like us, uh, it's it's just a different world that's coming. This is the dark darkness right before the dawn. So this is going to be the most challenging period of time. Perhaps, you know, again, the next, uh, next year or so, it will be the most challenging year we'll, we'll probably face. And, and then hopefully, as the uh, system disintegrates, things will, will rapidly get better. But, but we do have a period of transition. There is a per period of transition ahead, and it could last quite a, quite a, a while. The guys before had said, what they're saying 12, 15 years, something like that. I mean, the potential before things are, are really cleared out. But, you know, again, we are in that darkest part right before the dawn right now. Here you have people um, sending drones over the mountains loaded with food and supplies trying to reach people. This is a, a pretty rugged area, you know, to say the least. 
I've done some hiking through here. It's gorgeous, but it is rugged. And, uh, you know, this is an area, too, um, that gave people fits when it came to uh, the Revolutionary War and and the Civil War. As, you know, this is this is truly uh, a, a, an area loaded with just amazing natural resources but if you if you don't know what you're looking for like the average human now we're not gifted like the indigenous people like say the Cherokee and living in this area that understood you know all the edible foods that were right around them that that might not be the typical things you'd be looking for so people are using four wheelers taking supplies and even nurses into the hills um, you know, I found nothing but just amazing people out in this in this area. Some of the friendliest, nicest people. This is a video where this person's grandma took her neighbor, 75-year-old Junior Singleton of Frank, North Carolina, is a hero. After getting my grandparents out before the bridge gave way, he waded chest deep in water to rescue people before their trailer was was you know sent away, swept away. This is the type of thing that we're talking about. You're going to find people that will, you know, give you the, the coat off the back, uh, the cloak and tunic, if we want to use biblical terms, even literally risking their own lives to go save somebody. This is going to bring out the best in the best and the worst in the worst. And, and think about this. This looks like the beginning of a sci-fi movie, an apocalyptic movie. The kids are heading out trying to figure out how you know kids and mom are trying to figure out how do we get how, how do we get to, to civilization and and they got the dog with them too <clears throat> you know this is the reality it, these roads are all wiped out these people are completely isolated this is an isolated community of small mountain towns and so they're trying to make their way um to safety and you know um me logistically i start you know thinking oh i wonder which way they're heading do you know which way would they head to safety um you know they are very very spread apart and and there's there's just not a lot of uh resources if you don't know what you're really looking for mm -hmm. yeah i mean this gives a lot of credence to the idea that you should know your surroundings and you should know your local foods, which plants are safe to eat, where to find food, how to forage food, you know, even take mushroom classes. You don't want to just identify mushrooms on an app or on a on a book because there are certain parts to look for. I mean, mushrooms, to make sure that they're safe, you, you really should take a class so you can do hands-on and, and get some more understanding. But... Uh, people need to know these things and unfortunately so many do not because the technology that we use is taking over our our sixth sense you know and we're not um, exercising those six sense senses and we're not exercising that ability to really know what things are with our hands with our senses with our touch you know with our with our knowing so i think we need to go back to that and and yeah you know focus Focus on the silver lining. What is the silver lining? People are coming together. People are seeing the truth. That's the most important thing that we can do as a collective is really know where these energies are coming from and where we need to chop the head off the snake and where we need to make improvements. We need to know exactly what is not working so that we can prevent this from continuing to happen and if it's going to happen so that we can somehow help people much faster or people have more of a warning, there's a better way to do this and, and people are coming together and helping each other. So that aspect of it is very heartwarming. And then, you know, horses, I mean, horses, uh, thank goodness these guys are okay. But yeah, I mean, a lot of people have resources that are old fashioned, that work, <laughs> that still work, you know, horses, drones, four wheelers, all of these things would be a good idea to have handy. Yeah, back in the 1800s again. And just think about that, you know, with what happens after a, a big redo. Well, you know, if, if we did have the technology taken out, um, which again, the Polish psychic is saying, 
uh, that he sees the, the likelihood of some sort of big blackout that may be on a big chunk of the globe in you know the relatively near future wow you know you could see how we'll have these vestiges of these interesting structures and buildings and yet a lot of people literally might be using horses to get around uh or whatever they can again uh these times are are very different and and this is this is when things change uh, permanently they're not going back to the old way it we're not going back to 2010 or 2000 or 1980s you know we're going into uncharted territory and what's that going to look like that's a big question i think it really really depends on um you know how humanity responds and how fast humanity wakes up the the sooner the better so, you know, this is another breakdown as to how much money has been given out to each person. Basically, $9,000 per illegal immigrant that's entered the U.S. And you lose your house and everything, you get 750 bucks. Something wrong with this scenario. This man on the left here went to rescue his parents. His name is Sam Perkins. Became a hero when he hiked 11 miles through the treacherous mountain terrain to rescue his parents who were trapped in their home after the hurricane struck. N- known for his unwavering devotion, he would go to the ends of the, of the earth for his parents, and he did just that with actual cut off from the outside world and multiple hurricane-related fatalities. Odds were stacked against him. Along the way, he described the devastation as something out of a post-apocalyptic nightmare. Yet, you know, here he is. He went and, and, and did it because of love. And... This is, again, where the cream will rise to the top. And here you have people rescuing dogs that were trapped in kennels in the floodwater rising. It's just so, so scary and terrifying. Again, each each animal is, is a fractal of source. There is one source. You know, dogma is created just for the simple reason of division. And, you know, we hope that everybody will, will recognize how how much you know dogma has hurt us and not helped us you know there really is no helpful dogma when you get down to it it's all about division you know the source of all lies within you the path to true knowledge and freedom is within and tapping into that and then sharing that that compassion that you will find there with others that can transform the world absolutely as you see these two guys just chilling out and look very human the way they're sitting there just enjoying a snack on a nice day do they not and then what where did that per- oh my gosh that must be a lot of weight on you but look at how gentle the cow is the cow loves i think that's a she i didn't get a good look at her but you could see you know again we could use our our emotions and our feelings to to calm animals when when they're upset and we could do the same with each other Mm -hmm. there is a lot of good that can be done and there's a lot of good that will come up and out of this um we we i think we just need to stay focused on it and stay focused on what we want to see moving forward and bring that into a reality but our animals are so extremely therapeutic to us i mean they love they love us truly unconditionally and they go through traumas too and they've been left behind and they've been you know locked up so that they can't save themselves so that they can't go to higher ground and all of that is very very heartbreaking and um i don't like to see it you know so let's not forget our animals in times like this i i don't think it's a good idea to lock your animal up if you have to vacate somewhere i would leave them free so i know that there's um you know this or that could happen but if they're free they can go to higher ground yes there's a predator part of it but i just you know locking them in a kennel and the water rising and they have no choice you know it's like choose your poison and people are going through some very 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 difficult decisions and not one of them looks like has been easy for them but we can 
plan moving forward. What are we going to do? How are we going to handle the pets? How are we going to handle the livestock? Have a plan in place. Yeah, I remember um, greeting the cows every morning at the place I was at in North Carolina because the cows were the neighbors. And uh, they would say hi every morning. <laughs> don't don't underestimate nature and its ability to rebound. It's people that are going to need a, a little bit more help, I believe. The Mother Earth will be okay. And actually, uh, she'll start to thrive as the system lets go of her its grip on her. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.